So welcome back, we will continue our discussion on quality and we will today we will talk about how to achieve quality. So the reference for this piece of work is uh, the book by Bas Clements and Kaysman, Software Architecture in Practice, look at the third edition because third edition has some revised content and it is actually very nice. So what are tactics? So when you are building a software system in the process of designing it, you take many decisions. So some of the decisions are to achieve functionality. You might want to put a particular kind of computation in, in the system, so that is a functional decision. You may want to keep a, a table in a particular fashion with some fields and so on. So that is a functional decision decided by the functionality of the system. But some of the decisions you take are because you want the system to execute better let us say. So you might say look this process I am going to put it on a different machine. So as we have seen in our earlier lectures this is going to be a decision which will influence some quality parameters for example how fast it can respond, how many how much resources are available for that particular process. You might decide to take the table and uh, partition it vertically or horizontally sometimes. So that is a decision which is going to influence some of the responses. So if you look at the design decisions that you make while building a system, some of them are dictated by the functionality you want to achieve and some are dictated by the quality that you want to achieve. So tactics are design options that are available to the architect to achieve quality. We can show this in a small diagram like this. So let us say there is a stimulus coming to the system, my stimulus it could be a query that is coming to the system fired by the user and then there is a response given by the system. So the response is controlled by the tactics that we use to generate the response. So this is a simple diagram relating the stimulus to the response and where tactics come into play. So what is the tactic? So if you look into the dictionary, I checked up the Oxford English Dictionary online and it says an action carefully planned to achieve a specific end is a tactic. So there is a specific goal that we want to achieve and you are of course designed to achieve that particular end. Tactic is a word you must have uh, heard it in uh, many uh, con contexts, for example war is a, is a place where you keep hearing about tactics, tactical nuclear weapons for example. You uh, another simple example is if you do not want a country to uh, make an atom bomb, you go and bomb their facilities that is a tactic. But suppose you impose economic sanctions on it and do away with their ability to build the atom bomb, that is a very long term strategy. So you are achieving the same goal, but one is quickly achieved through in a very short term, in a short response time, just the ability to prevent somebody from doing something that is the tactic or you can take a more long term view and work on what is called strategy. Strategy and tactic are two terms, Ta tactics is in the, will achieve goals in the short and strategy will achieve goals in the long. A very nice example is in, uh, in chess for example, uh, you may want to sacrifice a, a pawn or even a bigger piece to gain a positional advantage. So that is a tactic, a short term gain. You hope to convert it into a long term win eventually, so tactics are typically short term gain. So when we talk of an architectural tactic, here is some definition. An architectural tactic is a means of satisfying a quality attribute response measure through architectural design decisions. So I have a quality attribute like performance. It has a response measure, you know, how do I measure that quality attribute? Maybe 
in this case through response time. So, I want the response time that I have at this point of time is may not be acceptable to me, it is not satisfactory enough. So, I employ a tactic to get the response time back into an acceptable band. So, an architectural tactics is a means of satisfying a quality attribute response measure through a design decision. In this case, a simple design decision may be, I am going to deploy this particular uh, system on a larger configuration, it is a very simple design decision. Now, one quick point, you might have heard of design patterns. Now, design patterns also actually allow you to achieve quality. In fact, they allow you to achieve multiple qualities. So, if you see carefully, a design pattern is actually a packaging of certain tactics. We will look at this later, but I quickly want to flag the tactics are actually being packaged into design patterns and has used the design patterns for a long time. So, here is a small picture which talks about what is a tactic. Let us say I have an architecture A and I implement a tactic on it. I, that means, I do a design decision which moves the architecture A to A 1, it has changed. So, if I do that, what would have, what has happened is the quality attribute parameter would have moved from Q A P to Q A P 1. Okay. The same thing that we talked about, I am just depicting in a small diagram. So, when it moves, it may move in a particular direction, it may go up or down. Okay. Typically, we want it to move into the band that we are interested in, either going up or down. So, here is a small definition picked up from the literature. An architecture pattern is a collection of components and interactions to resolve multiple conflicting forces. Okay. This is how pattern has been defined by the very well known book by Bushman and others. Now, it is interactions to resolve multiple conflicting forces. Whereas, if you look at an architectural tactic is a transformation that will move in the direction of resolving a single force. So, in a design pattern I will take multiple tactics and try to check out the trade off that exists between those forces that are there and build and try to use one particular trade off. Okay. So, which is acceptable and which is commonly used. Whereas, in a tactic I am going to pick up, I am going to enunciate or concentrate on one force that is of interest and then try to see one quality attribute that is of interest and try to see how I can manipulate it. So, what we will try to do is we will try to, uh, so let us see what we have said so far. We are saying quality requirements drive design, right? that is what architecture is all about. Quality attributes parameters differentiate one design from the other. If I have two architectures, two designs and uh, how are they different? They are delivering the same functionality, but they are different from each other because one is giving better performance than the other, one is more modifiable than the other, one has a greater mean time to failure than the other. And how do I achieve quality? I achieve quality through tactics. Summary. So, what we will try to do is we will look at quality attributes for some of these, we will, we will look at tactics for some of these quality attributes. I am not going to look at all the tactics for all these quality attributes, but I will at least highlight some important ones, so that we have an understanding of what this is all about. Let us start with availability, availability as a quality attribute. So, what is availability? So, availability is about when I am interested in a particular service, it should be available. right? So, it should be there when it is needed. So, availability is basically about reliability and recovery. By that I mean uh, it, should be, it should be there and if in case it happens to crash, it should be able to recover quickly. Right? So, in, in that uh, if it recovers, then again the service becomes available to me. So, I have a definition from the reference book. Let me read it out. Availability refers to the ability of a system to mask or repair faults such that the cumulative service outage does not exceed a required value over a specified period of time. 
so we can see that availability is linked to uh, security for example if there is a denial of service attack then the system becomes available and uh, a dos attack is a security concern as well similarly if the response is very slow then uh, it's the system is not available to me right i want to perform some function and uh, i type in some stimulus and nothing happens so it's taking a very long time to respond that means again the system is not available so availability is also linked to these quality attributes so if you look at the tactics that are available under availability this is the concept map talking of them now let me quickly flag that this body of knowledge is not a formal body of knowledge you might say look this is not all the tactics that are there under availability but what has happened is these have been proposed uh, more than a decade back and uh, the researchers were not able to find any new tactics there have been some reclassification and uh, uh, relabeling but by and large the tactics that are there for each one of the quality attribute have converged if i can use the word okay so in that sense it is uh, uh, as good as a complete body of knowledge but nevertheless it's not a formal body of knowledge there is no proof to say that these are the only uh, tactics that are, that you have for detecting faults okay we do not have that kind of statements so if you look at availability what are the tactics we have so the tactics are here but we can classify them under three groups so the first group is about detecting faults the second group is about recovering from faults having detected a fault you recover from the fault the third group of tactics is about preventing faults so if you want a high available system you prevent faults to start with if there is a fault you detect and after detecting you recover from the fault right so these are all the tactics and they are classified in this in these three groups so recovering from faults again it's you can classify them as two so before you recover you actually prepare for recovery and then you introduce the solution so let us look at how do you detect faults so detect faults are under the availability tactics so a simple way to detect a fault is through what we call ping and echo so there is a system here which wants to find out if there is a fault in this system or not it will send a, a ping and if the system responds with an echo then the system is okay so a component issues a ping and expects a reply and if it doesn't come back in time that means there is a problem so we are building a system in which you want to detect faults if some of the components are going down what you can do is you can build this tactic into your design so you can periodically send pings and see how long they are taking to come back and that's how you can find faults okay you can detect faults so another way is through heartbeats so earlier we said this component is actually sending a ping and this one responds but we could also have a scenario where this component by itself keeps sending a response periodically i am okay it's like the heartbeat so as long as the response is coming from the system this system will know that this component is all right okay that's what's called the heartbeat it's a very simple tactic again so you can in your system that you design you can have a scenario where there is one monitor heartbeat monitor and everybody sends their heartbeat to that monitor and the monitor will know that all the components or all the subsystems are up and running if there is a missed heartbeat then it can take some action right so that is fault detection so another simple way to detect faults which is actually quite popular in uh, hardware is let's say you have a function to compute and uh, that's a, 
a complex function there may be smaller subsystems and one component has failed so it is returned an incorrect value and finally the answer that is coming out is not correct. So the it is not that there is no response but there is a response but you are, do not have the confidence on the answer. So how do, what do you do in such situations? So you can do voting in such situations. So a simple thing that it can be done is have three components performing the same computation. So the same function is running on three subsystems or three components and then they all send their response to a majority polling subsystem and you can see if one of them has failed or done an incorrect computation then its answer will not tally with the others. So you pick up the majority value. It is possible you might have a scenario when all three of them differ but you know we are only managing probabilities here. Now let us see how we can recover from faults. So I am in this uh, section now availability tactics and talking about recovery from faults. So in this we have preparation and then reintroduction. So one simple way to do is you run the same function on two components okay, or multiple components and you can pick up the value from any one of them. So this is called active redundancy. So there is redundant computation happening. So if there is a response, more than one component actually computes the answer in parallel and then sends the answer. Okay. The system can pick up any either of these. So you can see that both systems B and B prime are going to be in, in synchrony in that sense. The same state of computation is present in both B and B prime, right. So if one of them goes down, the other is still up. So there is redundancy and it is active in the sense it is up online and available to you to pick up at any point of time. You can switch from this system to another, A can start using B prime if B fails instantaneously because B and B prime are in the same state of computation. So another way is passive redundancy. We have a redundant system B prime, but A is actually talking only to B. B is not ready to take over the computation if B prime B, B fails, but it is in synchrony and as, as a, whenever B fails, I update the state of B prime and then bring it into the circuit. So introduction of a new system is going to take some time okay, because I need to check the state of B okay, which I am actually periodically doing it, but B is not at the same state as B prime is not at the same state as B. Okay. This is passive redundancy. I have redundant hardware, but the states of B and B prime are not exactly the same. So how will B prime know that B is down? So another thing that you can do is even simpler than the earlier case, you keep a spare machine in your data center and whenever B fails, you bring up B instead of trying to go and buy the machine, you keep it available with you as a spare. This is a very common uh, uh, tactic that is used. All the cars have a spare tire for example. Okay. So we do not have a scenario where uh, for each car we have an active redundant tire running, right. we only have a spare tire running. Right. If I have, we had an active redundant tire, I do not need to change the spare tire, right. it will keep running. So I will have a spare in the, uh, in the dicky and whenever the component fails, I am going to remove this and insert it. It is going to take some time and uh, 
I need to actually construct the state of B prime to the same state as B was when it happened. So, I actually keep use of keep use of some persistent component which actually stores the state of B in some sense it may be a database to boot up B prime and bring it to the same state. So, you can see I this kind of uh, tactic is useful in uh, less mission critical systems. When I am talking of an active redundant system, then uh, it is like a hot standby if something happens, uh, it quickly takes over automatically. In the second case, there is some small, small delay because the system is up and running, but some state re resynchronization has to be done. Here I have probably have to build the system all over again. Okay. So, three grades of redundancy. The point here is that the, in this case, if I have a spare, I can use the spare computer, let us say, spare CPU, uh, CPU box, I can use it for any part of the system. If I have a tire as a spare, I can use it for any one of the four wheels, whereas if it is an active standby, then it is dedicated to that subsystem or the component. So, another way to recover from a fault is through a rollback. You know, those of us who are familiar with database systems know about this. So, what we do is first we create a checkpoint, which is a consistent state at some point of time. And from there, we keep on maintaining logs of every app operation that has happened. And whenever there is a need to recover from the consistent state point, I can roll forward using the log, I can construct the state of the system. Right? This is another tactic. So, the way to recover from faults is preparation, constructing the log is the preparation and repair is the playing of the log. So, another way to handle this is you run a previously failed component in shadow mode for a while to make sure it is working properly. So, when you want to reintroduce a component, you are not sure whether it has come to full speed or not in terms of consistency of the various databases and uh, warming up of the caches and so on. right? So, you run it in a shadow mode that means, it is executing, but it is not synchronized yet, as yet. Okay? So, this is a tactic which is actually very interesting and has its utility. So, state resynchronization is uh, another tactic. The next tactic that we are talking about is fault prevention, which is about which is again a tactic and tactic under set of availability. So, we are talking about how do we prevent faults. There are all these tactics possible. I am going to talk of one or two of these. So, one how do you prevent a fault? One simple way is if you think a particular component is not doing well, you just remove it from service and then do the repair on the fault and bring it back in. A simple example is rebooting a system. Very often large uh, computer systems, large operating systems may spring memory leaks and resulting in some problems. So, periodically rebooting is going to recover all the memory and come give you a clean slate to start with. So, whenever you think you have a a, a free time in the running of the system, you just go and restart the system and you, are, you would have covered a large number of leaks that might have sprung up. Okay. This is a very simple tactic and uh, practiced by uh, lots of people. Of course, your, your system should, should uh, allow you this luxury of taking a machine off and then rebooting it. Some architectures may not, but uh, whenever it does, it is a very powerful tactic. Another tactic which is very well known, which is uh, prevent faults is the concept of transactions. So, here what are we doing? Whenever I need to do a perform a sequence of transactions, sequence of operations like transfer money from here to there which consists of multiple operations. 
I make sure that all of them get done or none, the all or none concept, right. Otherwise, it might happen that in the middle of the set of operations, there may be a crash and the system goes into an inconsistent state. If I ensure that either all the operations get done or none, then it is not going to go into an inconsistent state. I am preventing the system from going into an inconsistent state. In that sense, transactions is a tactic for availability, which will prevent faults. So, what I would like you to do as homework is to think of tactics for availability. There is a list of tactics already given and try to look for examples, where each one of them is applicable or where you might have seen it applied or where you could potentially encounter it. See you soon.